A few months ago, here on the Scrimba YouTube channel, we made a video teaching you how to build a web developer portfolio that will increase your chance of getting hired. We're a few months down the line and we got to thinking, what if we reviewed some of your actual portfolios right here on a video? I posted on Twitter, got some really generous replies, and here we are today. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing free junior web developer portfolios and offering the best constructive feedback I can. I will try my best to present the feedback in such a way that you watching can leave the video with some actionable ideas about what to do to improve your own portfolios and your own chances of getting hired as a junior web developer. I really hope you enjoy this video. We may even do more in the future. So I'm actually linking a tweet in the description where I'm inviting people to submit another round of portfolios for a potential review. So whether we make another video or not, by and large depends on you. So if you like watching the video, you have to comment and like and stuff. So we know you'd like it obviously, um, but we need portfolios to review as well. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, check it out. Let's jump into the reviews. All right, first up, we have this website by Chen, which I absolutely love at first glance. I really like the orange accents. It gives the website a vibe and a theme. The fact that front-end developer is so prominent makes it impossible to confuse what Chen is all about. And just throughout the website, there's a very obvious intuition for padding and symmetry, and it's overall just very readable and pleasant. Great job so far, Chen. Now, I'm really curious to know what you think. So read this along with me. It says, hi, I'm Chen. I'm based in a little city called Sydney from the... What do you think that word says? Do us a favor, please, and comment in the description what your intuition was. Because genuinely, my intuition when I read this was that it was like some Slavic language, but actually it says down under, upside down, which is clever. But in my case, what was going through my head is that D, O, and W are like also letters upside down. Like an O upside down is also an O uh, the other way around. And then it has these kind of like angular lines. It just got me thinking a certain way. So it could just be me, but let us know in the comments and we'll know we'll know for sure. It is a really nice little bit of character no matter what. Something Chen's done really well here is the show more button. I think it looks much cleaner initially uh, without all of the logos. That would be distracting, right? It might deflect from Chen's sort of bio. So putting that behind a show more button is a really good idea. The only feedback I would offer here is that me as a developer, like I sort of recognize this is the Figma logo, this is probably Material UI. Um, I wasn't 100% sure what this logo was, by the way. I'm happy to admit that. Um, but using my sort of fiddly intuition, I right clicked it and I looked at the file name and I'm like, oh yeah, of course it's Tailwind. But that got me thinking, a non-technical recruiter might not do that. And what a lot of recruiters are doing, especially with resumes, but I'm sure there's a degree of it with portfolios as well, is they are kind of uh, keyword matching. They have a job description in one hand, a portfolio or a resume in the other hand, and they're trying to match the keywords. Um, not a computerized process, they just don't know what Tailwind is potentially, so they're just seeing if it's a good fit they won't recognize the logo. And so the feedback I would offer here is to add a little bit of text beneath each logo, or maybe what you could do to make this change less obtrusive is add a sort of tool tip. You can do that using a HTML property, but it might be even cooler if you use some kind of custom tool tip for that. All right, let's do a quick responsive check and see if Chin's website looks good on mobile. Yeah, this looks uh, really good, see? It really collapses and looks just fine on mobile, uh, which is super important because a lot of people work from their phone these days, you never know where they'll be when they first see your portfolio. Uh, they might get an email and just check it out quickly. And that first impression matters a lot. And so, you know, great work making this responsive. Scrolling down a little bit, we have all of Chin's projects. Now, this is so important. I think a lot of people maybe forget that, you know, this is a project portfolio and your projects are the most important things. I would say two projects is the minimum, five or so is the maximum. Chin has four, which is uh, just fine. I do have a little bit of feedback that I hope can help Chin and maybe you can apply to your own portfolios. And the first thing, what's a bit specific to Chen here is that, you know, you have this list of tags essentially right here, or the programming languages, um, which is great. And it actually looks really nice. But then you also have another list of tags up here in just plain text. My advice would be to remove this one and sort of bundle it up with this list at the bottom. I reckon you'll quickly find it looks a bit busy. And to that, I say you could probably remove HTML and CSS because if you're working with JavaScript and it's a website, I think those things are probably a given. 
The other thing I'd like to share with Chen, but I also think is super relevant to you watching, is to consider adding screenshots of the projects. At the end of the day, a person reading your portfolio is going to click probably the first one or, or one at random. And this does two things, right? Like you miss your opportunity to help them pick the project what is most interesting to them. I'll give an example, right? So right here, you've built a website for a driving school. I know this is a bit far-fetched logically, but say the recruiter had a friend who was a driving instructor or a cousin or something, and they see that you've built this like awesome driving instructor website. Their eyes are gonna be latched there, and then they're going to realize, oh, if my cousin or friend had this website, they could sell more driving lessons. They make this association that Chen, you're someone who can can deliver value to a business, you'd be a great person to reach out to. Again, that's quite a sort of limited example, but you can't predict someone's imagination or how they're going to interpret things. The best thing you can do is offer as much nicely presented information as possible. And in this case, we're thinking of screenshots in particular. I actually recently wrote a post on the Scrimber blog about 10 minimal portfolio examples. And I reckon this example from Alex, uh, not me by the way, different Alex, is really relevant here. Like he's included a really nice screenshot with a bit of padding that adds a bit of depth and professionalness to the portfolio. It just gives it that little bit extra. That's definitely something Chen and yourself can consider. Something else Chen could definitely consider, and I would like to see this from everybody watching as well, is to create a dedicated projects page. Not very different from what we just saw from Alex, right? So projects slash the project name. Um, here, you can write a lot about your motivation to build the project, the story behind it, what tech stack you chose and why, what challenges did you encounter and how did you overcome them? Another thing you can totally add in the sort of description of the project on its own page is some ideas about the next things you would like to add to the project. I often think that we have aspirations as developers, we just don't practically have the time to implement and demonstrate, but the ability to have a vision and to articulate what features you would add next, I think, uh, is great. That's worth demonstrating. And as a bit of a bonus, it just adds a bit more padding to your portfolio. And I get it, you know, portfolios sometimes are not your priority. You might not want to build a dedicated page or blog as part of your platform. But here's a really cool example where Frank Alina actually made their case study or their project description a PDF, uploaded that wherever, S3, Dropbox, Google Drive, and just linked to the PDF document. And um, this will 100% get the job done, but technically it's like a very low investment. You can spend all your time articulating the great things about the project. I'm gonna give Chen one little last bit of feedback and I, I won't repeat this for the other portfolios. I think it's something a lot of new web copywriters sometimes overlook a little bit. And that is just the text on the buttons. I get it, this won't make or break you. You know, this won't be the thing that means you definitely get the job or you get refused based on. But I think a little tweak like this, when added up with some other little tweaks, can go a long way. And what I'm thinking of in particular is these buttons that say homepage and GitHub. Maybe homepage could say, uh, check it out yourself or, you know, view the live websites. GitHub could say, you know, show the source code. And that way the language is a lot more action based and it describes exactly what you want to expect. Another sort of principle in copywriting for websites and designing links is that you don't really want to dilute your links, right? So if you present somebody with 10 links, probably they're going to click the first two or three the most and the ones at the bottom will never get clicked. If you present it in a grid like this, every extra link you add uh, dilutes the chance of another link being clicked essentially because the viewer has more options. And in this case, there are four links. I'll just zoom out so we can highlight it uh, to like the GitHub profile. Um, which I think just dilutes the chances a little bit and could potentially be a slightly, 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 slightly confusing user experience when what you really care about going to is the project GitHub. All right, I hope that helps. Next up, we have Jacob, whose portfolio at a glance is really impressive. I mean, when you scroll down, you get these like pretty cool animations. Along the way, you notice how it's project dense. Again, this is a project portfolio. And one thing I'm particularly impressed by is the blog at the top. This is something that separates a lot of candidates, I think, based on your enthusiasm to not only learn, but demonstrate your learning, commit things to memory and share with the community. Written communication skills are a great way to differentiate yourself among a lot of equally skilled coders. So I think this is awesome on Jacob's behalf. Now, I hope the way in which these uh, reviews are useful is that, you know, me, somebody with fresh eyes who has no context about the website can share honestly the thought process I have as I humbly try and understand what you are all about. And actually my first question when I read about Jacob is, you know, what is DDD? 
The first line says, my DDD skills helps your business grow, which sounds great, but I really have no idea what DDD meant or means. I'm not a complete cowboy. Obviously, I did look into it a little bit, and I do now know if I scroll way down and I piece the bits together, but DDD probably means designer, developer, and data analyst. But as a user, you know, I shouldn't be expected to figure that out. No problem, of course, but I think we can perhaps make the value proposition a bit clearer. I want to be clear that combining the knowledge of design, development, and data makes you a generalist and perhaps a very unique person to hire because you can arguably do three jobs under one umbrella. I also really appreciate how Jacob is thinking about the value proposition, even if the DDD bit is a bit confusing. Um, you could easily write here, hey, I'm Jacob, I was born in 19 something something and I'm from here and I like this and I like that. Um, but Jacob is 100% thinking about what do I have to offer that someone's going to care about and they explain that they help your business grow. I just think we can tighten this up a little bit. I had a little go. I think it could be a bit better. But what if instead it said something like, I sit at the intersection of web development and data analysis to extract insights and present them in a beautiful and easy to understand way that helps your business grow. Get in touch. That's just my first pass. I hope it's helpful. Scrolling down a bit, I think uh, Jacob can take the same feedback as for Chin, basically just that a recruiter won't recognize uh, some, or in this case, probably most of these uh, logos. Like, I guess that's Heroku and Django, probably. Add a tooltip or add some text underneath the icons, like in this portfolio that I'm putting on the screen. Now, one thing that, you know, Jacob deserves a lot of credit for is the projects. And in particular, I checked out this one, uh, which go figure is the first one in the list. You know, that's just the way it goes. Whatever comes first will probably get the most clicks, whether it's in your website, a post or a newsletter or something. Um, so in truth, I've checked out this one and I was just impressed. I didn't, I didn't feel the need to go much further, but this is sick. Like you can generate your own QR code. And then when you sort of scan it on your phone, I hope that uh, focuses quickly so you can see before it goes. The question I have is just like, you know, how did you build that? If I'm very truthfully, brutally honest, I think there's uh, two ways this could have been done. The first way is like you actually coded the algorithm what generates the QR code. Another maybe slightly more likely thing for a newer developer to have done is like uh, use some kind of library or API or something. No matter what, it's still good. I think if you built it yourself, right, that absolutely has to be something you brag about. If you were to use a library, then that doesn't mean this was a drag and drop type thing. Uh, there were certainly some considerations there around which library to use, how do you integrate with it, how do you customize it? And just like we touched on before, it would be wonderful if you wrote about all these things. First, to give the person viewing your portfolio more confidence that, you know, you have that technical aptitude, um, but also to generate some questions like, you know, you get into the interview and then it's like, hey, Jacob, man, I checked out the, the QR code thing and I read about it. Here's a question I had that you didn't answer. And, you know, you just spark that intrigue and it just greases the wheels the whole way. Overall, absolutely fantastic job, Jacob. All right, last but not least, we have Ryan's portfolio, which I have to be honest, like when I first opened it, I'm not gonna act and recreate my expression, but I was like, wow, this looks amazing. I, I think you probably get the idea, like it's a homage to iOS, right? With the meme emoji, really creative idea, by the way, uh, and obviously the widgets. There's also like little delightful interactions, like the dark and light mode, that's a really good vibe. And these tabs at the top, how it's sort of a single page app and it sort of filters out the widgets. I think it's just really cool. So to be honest, like when you're reviewing any piece of work and especially a portfolio, it's really important to ask what is the objective of the portfolio? What is the thing that Ryan is trying to accomplish? I don't know 100%, but I assume it's to get his first junior web developer job in a reasonable period of time. I think when an employer checks out your portfolio, they definitely want to get a vibe. They would definitely appreciate getting to sort of know a little bit about you. I think the sort of Spotify bit and your music taste and the map and sort of the running statistics and things like they're a great dollop of personality. But at the end of the day, it's also about your technical aptitude and things like your projects. And so I think the main thing this website could be missing, depending on your goal, it is more projects. When I click projects, I see that the Spotify thing is highlighted, probably because you're pulling that from an API, right? And it's definitely something worth uh, writing about, but I don't totally know. And it's just introducing doubts into my, into my line of thoughts. And in general, I get linking to GitHub. I mean, aesthetically, this is sick. And there is an argument that GitHub could be where your projects live, just like LinkedIn is where your work history lives. Um, but it would, I think, be better to include widgets or cards 
um, for the projects and to write a bit more about them. I would say the portfolio is a project and I was curious, you know, I can't lie, the question that came into my head um, is like, you know, was this something Ryan built or is it based on a template? It, it looks that good, like you have to understand. I looked at the source code and it looks very handwritten to me. I think probably it's in your GitHub as well. So um, it seems likely you built it. You know, you're listening to me, someone who's extremely motivated to get to the bottom of it and help you. And I only have three portfolios to review essentially. Uh, you have to put yourself in the shoes, I think, of somebody like a busy hiring manager or recruiter, where generally, if you imagine it as a graph, the more applicants they have, the less time they're going to spend uh, sort of giving you the benefit of the doubt and gauging your technical experience. There's a good chance that the general aesthetic and design of this just carries you beyond that. But if we're thinking about how to optimize things, uh, yes, my advice would certainly be to sort of add more projects and more information about them. The other thing I would change, again, it depends on your goal, is the copy in the about and the all sections. I really like this, you know, like if you're, if I'm in a community with you or we're, we're going to be mates, you know, it's really cool to see this. Like, I think it's very authentic. I think from an employer's perspective, sometimes they're a bit finicky about the years of experience requirements. Uh, and even if, you know, three or four is unrealistic, it's not uncommon for people to think, oh, at least a year of experience is the minimum. I, I hate that because I don't think every, in your case, eight months are made equal. You could have done more in those eight months than another new developer did in 18 months, right? So it's not relevant. And I think from an employer's perspective, it possibly stands to bias against you. I also think that even though it's a bit awkward, I honestly get it, it's a bit awkward. I think you could be a bit more assertive in your copy about, you know, what you're after. If you're hiring, you know, maybe get in touch, right? That's kind of how it comes across. And so I would definitely say something like, you know, what is your objective? I would put your objective there. Like, hey, I'm Ryan. My goal is to become a, is to work as a company where I can deliver business value while also leveling up my skills as a developer. You know, that shows the employer that you are someone who is motivated to contribute, but you're also wanting to level up. And in a lot of cases, as a junior developer, uh, employers understand economically, intrinsically, that it is an investment. And by investing in somebody who shows potential, which by and large is to do with their motivation, right? Whether they want to get better or not. I think that might just, you know, move the needle a little bit for you actually in this case. And, you know, the portfolio is not the whole thing, you know, LinkedIn, resume, cover letter, all that good stuff, networking but maybe if you're writing in this way on your portfolio, you might be writing in that way elsewhere. And so, yes, I would certainly be a bit more decisive in the language that you choose. But otherwise, I mean, this is just, this is just beautiful. Like this could be featured in a, uh, you know, those award websites where people highlight some awesome portfolios. Visually, this could belong there. So great work, Ryan. Oh gosh, I, I hope that was like good feedback. I mean, it's a bit awkward uh, giving feedback when you don't know people's objectives exactly. Uh, I've tried to be uh, fair and objective and stuff and genuinely every one of those portfolios has some really great attributes to them that I know you watching can feel inspired by. Um, but also hopefully my advice from the perspective of someone who's interviewed a lot of hiring managers and recruiters and senior developers and been through that process myself, hopefully, hopefully that can help a little bit as well. As a reminder, at Scrimba we're considering doing more of these, but only obviously if they are useful and uh, we have enough portfolios to review. So I posted on Twitter today, pretty much. Uh, so you can start submitting your portfolios in case you want them to be considered for a potential review video at some point in the near future. Maybe it's, it's monthly. Uh, we'll settle into that together. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe to the Scrimba YouTube channel. Uh, we upload every week all kinds of videos about learning to code, breaking into tech, and we do live streams every week as well with awesome expert guests. Please as well like the video because that gives us good vibes in the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, I've been Alex Booker. Goodbye.